Jesus, who has fought the good fight to the end, and to be the grain that's falling to the ground to die and rise again. This is my sacrifice and open here I pray. Sacrifice and open here I bring. Yeah, Lord, I come to do your will. Yeah, Lord, I come to do your will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Hearty welcome to the Eucharist, my dear sisters and brothers. Once again, we gather around the altar from the different continents, from the different uh, places in India, religious sisters, brothers, priests, united, asking God to bless us. We pray for our intentions, intentions in our hearts. Above all, we pray that we, through this Eucharist, Come closer and closer to the Lord, to the, the word that we hear, uh, receive him in our hearts. To the spiritual communion that we make, we again feel his presence in our hearts. We begin this Eucharist now, putting ourselves in God's presence and asking his forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who led Saint Martin de Porres by the path of humility to heavenly glory, grant that we may so follow his radiant example in this life as to merit to be exalted with him in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Kindly sit for the reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father 
the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god. god our response you are my praise lord in the great assembly together you are my praise lord in the great assembly my vows i will pay before those who fear him the poor shall eat and shall have their fill they shall praise the lord those who seek him may their hearts live on forever and ever together you are my praise lord in the great assembly all the earth shall remember and return to the lord all families of the nations worship before him together you are my praise lord in the great assembly for the kingdom is the lord's he is the ruler of the nations they shall worship him all the mighty of the earth before him shall bow all who go down to the dust together you are my praise lord in the great assembly and my soul shall live for him my descendants serve him they shall tell of the lord to generations yet to come declare his saving justice to people yet unborn these are the things the lord has done together you are my praise lord in the great assembly and let's stand for the gospel alleluia alleluia come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest says the lord alleluia the lord be with you and, and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord At that time one of those who reclined at table with Jesus said to him Blessed is every one who will eat bread in the kingdom of God But he said to him a man once gave a great banquet and invited many At the time for the banquet he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited Come for everything is now ready but the all alike began to make excuses the first said to him i bought a field i must go and see it please excuse me another one said i bought five ox yoke of oxen i am going to examine them please excuse me another said i married a wife and therefore i cannot come so the servant came and reported these things to the master The master of the house became angry said to his servant go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city bring in the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame the servant said sir what you have commanded has been done still there is room master said to the servant go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come that my house may be filled I tell you none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. The gospel of the Lord praise to you Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers the gospel passage from St Luke is something that we heard already the same incident also in the reading of Matthew not so very long ago and I remember we reflected on it and commented how important it is to say yes to the Lord how important it is to have clear priorities what is more important to go to the banquet in matthew it was the son of the king it was his wedding here it just says a big banquet a rich person uh, or would have the great honor to have been invited by the king or to go and check the field the oxen etc but i would like to share with you a few thoughts about the first reading read by father richie uh, from the philippians 
this passage, chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, are uh, perhaps one of the most dense writings of St. Paul on the mystery of Jesus. It comes in the liturgy. It's also almost like a hymn which can be sung liturgically. He gives the whole theology of Jesus densely in these six verses. First of all, the context. He's writing to the Philippians. I mentioned to you that he was very friendly with the Philippians. He, there's not major problems. The only group from which he accepted some gifts and assistance and very personal relationship to the Philippians. But there was one problem that there was uh, there were some who were a little selfish and were not uh, were preaching the gospel, but for their own glory, not for the glory of the Lord. There was a beginning to be a little disunity, and therefore he begins uh, by telling them, have the same mind in you which was in Jesus Christ in you. But the whole theology of Jesus, so be united, whole theology of Jesus, he was in the form of God. And uh, the Greek word used was morphe, which means the essence of God. Something can't be changed. Uh, there are several words in Greek uh, for the same word form, which we translate into form. It's not an external appearance only, but the essence. He had the essence of God, but he was not thinking of divinity as something to be grasped, to be whole, clung on to, and therefore he became man. The whole idea of the incarnation, Jesus is, was, is God, divine, but not some, divinity not something to be grasped. He ready to empty his divinity and to become taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of man and therefore he uh, this really this passage of uh, philippians gives us the theology that jesus is fully god because he he had the essence of god but he emptied himself to become fully man and this was not he did not hold on to the divinity but became man now and then he says he speaks of what jesus did on earth humility Obedience and self-sacrifice. Being found in he humbled himself by being obedient to the cross. And even being obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Humility, he em emptied himself and became a human person, fully human. And uh, there was no uh, pretensions. I mentioned to you earlier also in speaking of the Beatitudes and several times that humility is an essentially Christian virtue which Jesus came to teach us. It was not, it was seen as a weakness before. Somebody was humble, it was seen as meekness, as weakness. Humility, obedience, obedience to the Father who wanted, the Father wanted him to come, God, he came in obedience to God's will. We don't understand the mystery of Trinity, my dear brothers and sisters, Father, Son are one. Uh, but two persons, uh, how we, well, only when we go to heaven we'll understand. And this obedience meant even death on the cross. And Paul is giving in these two lines the whole of Christology, the whole theology of the redemption, that fully God, fully man, humble, obedient, and self-sacrifice. And he says, as a result, speaks, God exalted, gave him a name above every other name. It's not John, Paul doesn't explain what does he mean? Now, whenever God gave a name, like Abraham became Abraham, and they became father of all nations. Uh, Jacob became Israel, again, the beginning of a new kingdom. Now, the na new name of Jesus, we can conclude, but not, that, uh, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Was this the new name, the new title? Paul doesn't say here, nor in any of our reading, exactly what he meant by God gave him a new name. Perhaps it's just that the title that he's Lord. Now, Lord was a title in the context. Emperors had it, kings had it, the, the greatest person had Lord, and Yahweh is called Lord also. And therefore, he gave him that, uh, that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, uh, this is really, uh, friends, the shortest profession of faith. But it is the Apostles' Creed. Jesus Christ is Lord. If somebody says, he does not have to understand the Trinity and the sacraments in the church. Jesus Christ is my Lord. He is a disciple of Jesus. He is a Christian. And therefore today, uh, I, I would encourage you when you have time, 
that to, to read this this first reading again over and over. It's, it's used in liturgy often in the Holy Week. It's used at Christmas time. It gives the whole theology of incarnation, theology of redemption, uh, that, that Jesus is fully God, fully man, and it's it's sort of uh, really uh, they say it's the, one of the best passages that Paul has ever written, dense with theology, uh, to the Philippians. And all this he ends with saying to the glory of God the Father. So everything you and I do is finally to be uh, glorifying God the Father. Uh, uh, life, family life at home, uh, studies in school, my dear children, uh, when you're working, everything for the glory of God the Father, to make the world a better place for us to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, I told you often that uh, Paul was passionately uh, in love with Jesus. He, he, he was so adhered. That's why uh, we had it a couple of days back where he says, uh, uh, I prefer to go up soon and be with my Jesus, although there's a lot of work to be done here. So he, he, he prefers uh, union with Jesus' death rather than working here because he's eager to meet Jesus again. And so here we have the theology. I'd like you to read it, understand it, and make it part of our lives. Today uh, is also the feast. It's not a very big, only a memorial, not a big feast, of Martin de Porres. He said the opening prayer from that saint. He was a son of a Spanish soldier. They had gone to Peru to conquer uh, South America. And the mother was a Panamian, I think, a local girl. And uh, he, not a very affluent person, not a very clever boy, but, but somehow they say God illumined him to understand uh, theology, illumined him to do work. And he became a Dominican brother. And uh, he uh, had, had the different tasks there because not very educated. Uh, he actually, they say the prior broke the rules of the constitutions to be able to allow him because he was not fully qualified, not fully, uh, not sufficiently uh, well versed in the languages. So allowed him to take the vows and became a brother, not not, not a priest. And uh, but you know he had, he had he was illumined by God, and so he worked for the poor. Now I was wondering often whether this Martin de Porres. I often thought maybe it, with Porres is it refers the the Spanish Portuguese word. Poor, whether it meant pa Martin of Poor was, or was that really his surname? I don't know. And but he worked for the poor, for the slaves, and he uh, he was collecting. Uh, interestingly, when he found little girls there to have dowry at time for, and so then he would collect money to enable them to uh, go and uh, get married. He would collect uh, money to help people to study the the, the slave children of slaves. So that was his uh, great uh, work of earth. We pray to him also to help us to have this compassionate heart. Although he was so uneducated and all that, uh, they said that God illumined him very often and he would say brilliant things in his, when he gave talks. But that's, the Lord gives gifts where he will. And so may we pray to St. Martin to, there are many Martins, but this is Martin de Porres of South America, to illumine our hearts and give us also a compassionate heart for the poor, the weak, the suffering. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us, for salvation through Christ our Lord. So in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, with joy we proclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, <coughs> with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Martin de Porres, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced on a life. Praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us say now the Our Father, great faith, love, and joy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and safe from all distress. Wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, with your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Talk the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. To only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that, renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ended. Let's go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God bless you. Uh,
So sort of have a nice, we begun the week already uh, yesterday, have a lovely week and uh, today we'll have, a, we've had a, a day before yesterday uh, was all saints, yesterday was all souls and we continue praying right through the week uh, for all the souls and I mentioned that the Holy Father has given the indulgences right through the month from the 1st November right till the end we pray for the dead so uh, pray for the dead in a special way tomorrow's Wednesday I take all your intentions I, I, I will we will pray for the dead also uh, tomorrow when we have the uh, mass the Eucharist Wednesdays and Saturdays I bring your intentions uh, I really feel close uh, to you we're one family we're praying for each other uh, now there's the theology of this uh, souls Praying for Souls, the Communion of Saints. I've asked Father Tony Charangat, our editor of the Examiner, to give us a catechesis this evening uh, so that you understand how we pray the dead, how we are all united in one family. As I told you, one family, Jesus is the head, those in heaven, those in purgatory, and those on earth are united. Your father, your mother, your brother, your spouse, still eternal life, and we are united in prayer, in sacrifices, and penance. Tony will develop, Father Tony will develop that a little bit uh, this evening. Probably you will see that in the examiner as his editorial also, because he's the editor of the examiner. God bless you. Have a lovely day. God bless you. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm.